Welcome, my name is Hazard. I'm an F-35 fighter pilot for the Air Force. Today we're gonna to be talking about a day in the life of a fighter pilot. And actually it's gonna be two days in the life and the reason is we don't fly every day. So breaking it down to its most basic element, we have non-flying days and flying days. We'll talk through a non-flying day first. So when we show up to the squadron, we all have a secondary job other than flying. So my first job was to be in charge of scheduling the squadron's next week's activity. So it's a, a difficult job, it's a house of cards. We have three basic types of pilots. We have wingmen, we have flight leads, we have instructors, and then we have more uh, specialty pilots. We have the weapons officer, we have CFEs, all these different types of qualifications, and they all have to mesh together. So it's a difficult job and it takes a lot of work to do that. After I was a scheduler, I was in charge of training. So we have all these different events that we have to do every so often. So we have to do uh, a night flight every so often, have to have landing currency, have to refuel every so often. And so as chief of training, I was in charge of making sure that all the pilots had those qualifications so that they were ready for their next week's mission. After that, I was a flight commander. I personally think this is the best job in the Air Force. So I was in charge of 10 other fighter pilots. So I was in charge of their officer performance reports, whether they were going in upgrades, counseling them, trying to be a mentor to them, and uh, helping them to be the best pilots they could. I was fortunate enough to go into combat and lead them in as, a, as the commander of Alpha Flight, which was a, a great experience. After that, I moved to the F-35 and I was in charge of, I was a ADO, Assistant Director of Operations, so in charge of running uh, the squadron. And then after that, I was the Chief of Training Systems for F-35s, so coming up with new ways to teach pilots how to fly the F-35 apart from just flying the F-35 because that's expensive and we don't have the uh, resources to do that every day. So apart from flying, we'll go to our secondary job. Typically do that for a couple hours depending on how much work we have. After that, we'll have a non-flying uh, duty that's uh, usually like SOF or top three. SOF is the supervisor of flying. So you're going into the tower and making difficult decisions for all the pilots that are out there. So if there's a pop-up thunderstorm, are you gonna recall all the aircraft, potentially lose all that training? Is it worth it to do that? Or is the thunderstorm gonna pass 10 miles north of the airfield and everything's gonna be okay? Or if there's an emergency procedure on the outside runway and that shuts down, and now the inside runway is the only runway and a cargo plane lands on that and gets a bunch of dirt and dust on it. Are you gonna shut down that runway for them to clean it uh, and potentially have a bunch of aircraft divert? Or are you gonna accept the added risk that uh, aircraft may ingest uh, sand into their engines after they land? So you're making difficult decisions like that for the airfield. Uh, top three, you're kind of doing that on a squadron level. So you're interacting with maintenance making sure that everybody has the proper jet. So we have jets configured air to ground, air to air. Uh, some might have some minor systems issues and that might be able to go into, for instance, an uh, adversary line, but not the student's line. So you're working to make sure that everybody has the proper jet. After that, uh, we'll spend some time studying back in the vaults. So we have these big vaults. We have thousands of pages to learn uh, on our jet, thousands of pages of tactics to learn, uh, a lot of uh, information to learn on the adversaries. And then we're trying to teach people to be mission commanders. So going out and leading a dozen, two dozen, three dozen aircraft out there. And so as a leader, it's your job to be in charge of the other aircraft and make sure you know their capabilities. So we spend a lot of time studying other friendly aircraft's capabilities so that we know how to use them in the fight. After that, we'll typically spend uh, some time mission planning for the next day's flight. So that can be a couple hours all the way to a full day of mission planning, coming up with everything we're gonna do for the next flight. As an instructor, I'll sit down with the student and go through any questions that they have so they have some time to think about it and research those questions. As a student, you're spending time learning the next day's tactics. And if it's a CT continuation flight, then you're spending time building the, the actual plan. And then after that, we'll spend some time working out individually. So uh, it takes a lot of physical fitness to fly these jets. We're pulling up to nine Gs, nine times the force of gravity. So I weigh over 2000 pounds uh, under nine Gs. So it's important to be physically fit, to work out your legs, to be able to push that blood back into your brain so you don't pass out. It's also important out here in Phoenix 
Temperature can be 110 degrees in the summer, 120 degrees on the ramp. So it's important we're wearing G-suits, which are kind of like snow pants. We're wearing a jacket to pull our arms in if we have to eject. So when we get hot, I typically lose about five pounds after every flight uh, from just sweat. So it's important to be physically fit to be able to uh, withstand that. So that's pretty much it for a non-flying day. You're looking at 10 to 12 hours. We have to get out of the squadron to have 12 hours of crew rest prior to our next day's flight. The next day we'll show up about three hours before our brief and our showtime can be all over the place. So it can be at 4.30 in the morning. Uh, it can also be, if we're doing a night flight, at three in the afternoon and looking to get done about 12 hours later. The reason is because we have limited airspace. So we have dozens of different squadrons all using the same piece of sky. So we try to divvy it up at different times uh, to, to make it fair for everybody. So our schedule is all over the place depending on uh, where we're falling in that pecking order along with the mission we're doing. If we're doing a night flight, then obviously we have to fly when it's uh, dark out. We'll show up three hours before as wingmen. They'll be in charge of getting the weather and the notams. Uh, the weather, obviously important uh, for what we're gonna be flying in, both tactically as well from a safety of flight standpoint. And then we have uh, notams, so the airfields. What are the different issues with the airfield? So maybe run, one runway is closed, maybe another has a, a, um, a cable that's out, different things like that so that we know if we have to divert to an airfield that we have situational awareness on what's going on at that airfield. They'll also brief a emergency procedure. So every flight will brief uh, at an EP and that just helps build that core knowledge so that if we have an emergency procedure in the air, we know what to do. About two and a half hours prior to the flight, we'll start a flight brief that'll be led by the flight lead. And that'll be an hour long, and that'll go into everything we're doing, the contracts, the expectations, the tactics. We're kind of doing a mental rehearsal so that in the air, we uh, know what we're doing when we're actually burning fuel. We'll stop uh, the brief about 15 minutes prior to our step. At that point, we'll put on all our gear. So we're putting on that G suit. We're putting on our, uh, our jacket with the lanyards on. We're uh, pre-flighting our helmet, making sure the oxygen mask is good to go. We'll then go and get a brief by the top three. They'll tell us what jet we're assigned to, as well as the weather and the different uh, issues that are coming up with the airfield. We'll then go out to our jet. Crew chief will be waiting there. We'll uh, salute the crew chief, uh, and then we'll do the walk around uh, around the jet, just making sure that it's ready to go and fly. Hop in the cockpit, start up the jet, and uh, run through all the systems. If there's any issues, then we're gonna be working with top three uh, to make sure that we get a jet that's safe and flyable for the mission that we're actually flying. After that, we'll all taxi to the end of the runway and we'll wait till our takeoff time. So it's important to take off exactly at our takeoff time because we have so many squadrons using that same piece of sky. You don't wanna show up early. You also don't wanna show up late and eat into your airspace time. In the airspace itself, we're gonna do our mission. So we have a whole bunch of different missions that we do, everything from basic fighter maneuvers, that's dog fighting. That's what people are familiar with from Top Gun, where you're yanking and banking 1v1 within visual range. We have ACM, air combat maneuvering, that's that medium range air to air. We have long range air to air, that's tactical intercepts. We have BSA, basic surface attack, and that's learning how to drop bombs. We have SEED, suppression of enemy air defense. That's personally my favorite mission. That's where you're going out and taking out SAM sites and uh, surface air missile sites that are trying to uh, shoot aircraft down. So we have a whole bunch of different missions. We'll fly that mission. Typically it'll be about an hour to an hour and a half. We'll come back, we'll land, take off all our gear. We'll uh, turn our tapes in while those are processing. We will have a little bit of time to have a meal, cool off and get ready for the debrief. For the debrief itself, that typically lasts two to six hours. So we were spending a tremendous amount of time going through the sortie that only lasted an hour to an hour and a half. And we're spending 90% of the time on the 10% that didn't go exactly according to plan. And we'll sometimes listen to the same radio call 15 times to try and figure out what we can do better for, uh, for the next flight. Um, there's not a lot of high fives and patting on the back. We're trying to figure out everything that we did wrong so that we can get better because these sorties don't come every day. We're typically flying maybe three times a week. So it'd be nice if we could fly every day, but we can't. So we have to maximize our training time every time we're in the air. So two to six hours spending time on the debrief. If I'm leading that, I'll typically close with the big three. 
write those big three down of the three things that I can do better for the next flight, and I'll review it uh, prior to uh, the next time I fly that mission. After that, if there's time, I'll get a workout in and then uh, get ready for the next day. So that's uh, two days in the life of a fighter pilot. Hopefully that was uh, educational. If you enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe and I'll talk to you soon.